Because I still haven't been to a wedding that was as great as our wedding. This was many, many years ago. This was 17 years ago. So anyway, let me, long story short, I began to understand how God is the source, not me. Before I even had a salary, I understood that God is a source. So my wife and I made this commitment. We said, you know what? For every year that God gives us in this marriage, going forward, until we sense God says stop, we will actually give 1% extra beyond where we are starting because we started with 10%. And I said, we'll be married how long? 17 years. And so every one of those years, we added 1%. And so today we, we give how much? 27%. Uh, let me say this. We have never lacked. We have never found ourselves saying, God, we gave you. You didn't provide for us. God has taken what we have as we have given and multiplied it and resourced us. And he has blessed us. But we don't even give for that reason. We give because we understand that everything we have comes from God. We give our tithe faithfully, but in addition to that, we, we look after the poor, we look after our parents, we look after others because we've understood how liberal you can be when you have no limit in supply. So I want to just put that out there and to say this is what then I believe. That these promises that were there for the Old Testament believers, they still exist for us today. They're still accessible to us today. God wants to give you acceleration for investments. And what I'm saying is, listen, acceleration is not even necessarily money. It might be a divine idea. Anybody ever had a divine idea? I mean, I've had ideas where I'm like, how come no one in this town is doing this? God has made me, he's given me ideas that have made money beyond anything I could even have imagined. Just from an idea. And it's like, how come nobody even thought about that? That's called a divine idea. Another one is divine connections. I mean, you, you, don't even need, uh, you don't even need money. He just brings people into your life who just see you and they just have favor. Anybody ever had that experience? Someone just liked you. Okay, some of you look like that doesn't happen very often in your life. But someone just liked you. They saw you and they're like, my goodness. And I, I, I've, I've had experiences like that that have just thrown me off. I remember one guy. I mean, and this guy is incredible. He's such, a, uh, he's such a wealthy guy. He's such a wise man. He's somebody who any CEO in this country would love to spend time with. He advises Fortune 500 companies. Uh, not Nairobi Stock Exchange. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's a bit of a difference there. Fortune 500, the real Fortune 500. I mean, he, they call him, his first name basis, a lot of these guys. Uh, he's an incredible wealthy guy. We met once, and he I, just asked me what I'm doing, and I explained to him what's going on at Mavuno, and somehow God just gave my love for me. And he's like, I love what you're doing. I'm so, so excited. I kept wondering, what is it that's exciting him? Because everything I was telling him sounded very kawaida to me. But he's like, this is so refreshing. I want to be part of this. It's like, if I could be in your board, if I could be part of your board, I would want to be. If I didn't live so far. And he said to me, listen, any question you have, any thought you want answered, any problem you're going through, just talk to me. The guy gives me free advice. And you know what? I write to him. He writes me back three pages of incredible wisdom. I mean, he sends me books. He just says, this is a problem you're having. Let me send you books. And I'm like, my goodness, who has mentors like this? That's called divine connection. Are you understanding what I'm saying? God can actually lead you to divine connections that have nothing to do with money. So I'm saying God wants to accelerate. He wants to accelerate your investment. He wants to also protect your investment, keep you from the devourer. But you know, that's not my sermon. That's not the main point I want to make today. I want to go back. That was a foundation. I want to go back to what I really want to say. And it is this, that tithing doesn't make you rich. My friend didn't understand that. In fact, tithing can actually make you poor. Nobody told him that, so he was bitter at God. He didn't understand the passage we've just read. And so he was angry. And I want to say to somebody here, tithing can actually make you poor if you don't understand what we've just read. The promise is not that God will bless you with money. The promise is that God will bless what you're already doing. Are you understanding that? It's, it's, he will bless what you're doing as you're seeking his kingdom, as you're seeking your, his assignment, as you're investing. God will bless the work of your hands. Just like the Israelites needed to have a farm with crops in order that the blessing of the tithe would work. I need to have investments that God can accelerate as I work. I need to have that. You know, this is where my friend went wrong. Unlike the Israelites who had a farm that had crops, my friend had no investment, no saving, nothing. And then he's praying for God to give him to open the floodgates of heaven and send rain. Let me ask you a question. If you have a plot of land, actually, not, let's even go further beyond that. If you have no plot of land and rain comes, 
What do you say? It's a nuisance, isn't it? I see some people complaining about rain. That's because you have no land. And you have nothing planted in that land. Anybody with land says, praise God, it is raining, isn't it? And for, I believe for my friend, he had actually unlocked the gates of heaven. God was blessing with rain. But you know what? The rain came and found nothing. In fact, if you have nothing, you, rain just break up, it makes you dirty, isn't it? Because what happens? God brings you a factor of acceleration. That factor is 10,000, whatever it is. What's 10,000 times zero? So it doesn't matter what God gives you. You have nothing for him to multiply. This is what my friend didn't understand. Tell your neighbor, no seed, no harvest. Now, I've heard people asking whether savings and investments is, in a sense, displaying lack of faith. Is it contradictory, pastor? You told us last week, seek first God's kingdom. Don't work for money. Now you're telling us, invest. Surely. Is that a problem? Is it lack of faith? Should I just serve God? Be faithful and trust God to just hook me up with heavenly resources. Yeah? Anybody wondered about that? Let me read you what the Lord says to you. Note, these are God's words to you, not mine. All right? Disclaimer. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 6 to 8 says, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Not my words. Whose words? God's words. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer, no ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. We must be careful not to disguise our laziness with faith. Oh, I'm just loving Jesus. I'm just tithing. Oh, I'm just being faithful. <laughs> What does the Bible call you? Oy, I, didn't, I don't even want to say that word because it's not my word. Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, He who gathers money little by little makes it grow. Ah, oh. <laughs> You know what? Huh? Yeah, dishonest money dwindles away. He who gathers money little by little makes it grow. You know, we're the, we're the deal generation. You ever hear guys talking in the parking lot about deals? Pase, that guy, street, one million shillings, whatever, whatever. Your, your ears can even see how much money are these guys talking about. It's a deal. They have a deal. And we're like, oh my goodness, when will I ever have a deal? Anybody ever thinking, you want a big deal? What does the Bible say? He who gathers money, little by little, will make it grow. It's not about the big deals. Don't be, don't be, don't be impressed by people with big deals. The Bible says that's not necessarily the way to wealth. He who gathers money, little by little, will make it grow. Tell your neighbor, no seed, no harvest. You know, I believe the biggest difference between wealthy people and poor people is that the poor people eat their seed now. Whereas wealthy people, they invest their seed and they eat their harvest. They've learned the difference between seed and harvest. Let me say this, that this thing called a job is one of the most misunderstood things for our generation. Because many people think their job is harvest. And I want to say this morning, this afternoon, a job is not harvest. A job is your source of seeds. You know, it's very easy to get impressed by people in Mavuno Church. Just look at your neighbor. How impressive are they looking? People wear designer clothes and they have designer cars and they have designer what? And you're thinking, my goodness, they look so wealthy. Don't be impressed by how people look. The difference between the wealthy and the poor is that the poor are eating their seed now. That perfume that they're wearing could be their seed. Don't be impressed by it. That nice suit, they could be eating their seed now. Never be impressed by who you're looking at. By the way, you're looking at somebody right now who doesn't look very impressive. Let me tell you something. That guy could be 50 times your net worth. Don't be impressed. Don't be impressed by what they're wearing. That's the difference. And you can't tell just by looking. You need to really know somebody well to know if they're a wise investor, if they're a wealthy person or not. You know, some, I, I sometimes say that the, those nice perfumes and nice suits people are wearing are simply a disguise for their poverty. Because they have a big salary. You know, we sometimes mistake salary. Big figure, five figure, six figure salary. What, what, what? That's just seed. 
And that dude is eating all that seed. In fact, he's not just eating the seed. He's even borrowing more money. Do you know guys who borrow their money, what are they doing? They're not even eating seed. They're even eating the topsoil. Guys, listen. This is serious. You know, right now, the treasury, what's the treasury bill rate right now? Anybody know what it is? It's, it's about 12%. Just a few months ago, it was 2%. Do you know what that means for people who are in consumer debt right now? It means that you're about to understand what it means to be a slave to your lender. Debt is one of the biggest things to destroy you. It will finish you. It is a sign many times that we're not patient enough to build up like the ant, our seed. And what we do is we just want to eat our seed and then borrow somebody. And some of us are thinking we're wise because we're borrowing to invest, to invest, to invest. But listen to me. One of these days, it's going to come around. It did that in the States. And many people with their many investments that were owned by the bank. I remember hearing of stories where people just walked out of the house and locked it. Because you're like, you know, I can't pay. You just leave it with a key in the door and you walk away. Kenyans who've come back home. They understood if I stay there, I'll just be put in prison. So I'll, I'll be bankrupt. So what do they do? They walked out and left everything they'd been paying for for years because they were in such debt. And so I'm saying, listen, don't eat your seed. Your job is a source of seed. Plant the seed. Eat the harvest. Remember, no seed. You know, we're the swag generation. We're that generation where everybody wants to live in the suburb and drive the car, acquire the gadget, have the swag. You know, there's not just swag, it's the swag. We want, we want to be that good looking guy who everybody just, he walks into the room and is like, my goodness, what school did you go to? I mean, he's just got it all going on. But listen, it's all an illusion. It doesn't speak about real wealth. We have people here, even at Bavuno, who look rich but are actually quite poor. There are people here who are investing way below their potential. There are people who, if they lost their job today, three months down the road, they will be in serious crisis. There are some who, if they lost their job next week, Monday, they will be in trouble. Serious trouble. They will be in, in fact, I'm not even talking, next week, tomorrow. Isn't tomorrow, Monday? They will be in trouble. They won't even be able to breathe, if not for the salary that's coming in in the next few days. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? That is not a wealthy person. Even if they have a nice car, that is poverty. Because no seed, no harvest. Those two things I've spoken about must work together. When we tithe, we receive the blessing of acceleration. We receive the blessing of protection. But then we must save and invest in order for us to have something for God to accelerate. You know, when I began to understand these things, man, it changed everything. I began to understand. You see, you see I, I say you must have at least 10% of your income that you are saving every month so that you can use that to sow seed that God will then bless with acceleration. Ten, at least 10%. Now you understand what that means because if, you're, if it's 10% and then you're giving God at least 10%, that's 20%, and then the government's taking another 25% maybe, what does that mean? You're living on what? That's 55% left for you. If you're living on more than that, what I'm trying to tell you is you're eating your seed. You're eating your seed because no seed no harvest. Now, I want to invite a friend today. He's, she's a good friend of mine. She's somebody I really admire, somebody I've known for a long time. Uh, somebody who I think in many ways exemplifies the things we've been talking about this month. Uh, she is a founder or the founder of Real Stars, which is a Christian nonprofit organization that has a unique approach to ministry with orphans and street children. Basically, what they do is rather than use institutions, rather than put people in institutions, what they do is they find street kids. They don't look for the brightest and the best. What they look for is the most destitute, the poorest. And they take those kids and clean them up, and then they'll put them with families, uh, either their own birth family, if that family exists, or a relative, if they can find a relative of nobody else, they'll find a foster family, put them there. This is her mission. This is her assignment. This is her calling. She's passionate all the years I've known her about street children and orphans. And so they'll put them there. They'll support that family uh, by giving them a, a, an income to look after the child and also be able to eat themselves. And then they'll support that child through school. And what she says is she's passionate to see families bringing up children well. And so right now they, they've just done, they've done some tremendous things with this approach. And uh, they provide scholarships for these children. She's a member of Nairobi Chapel, uh, which is, uh, many of you know this, this is a church that began, uh, Mavuno Church. And uh, we've had a long experience because we were part of Nairobi Chapel before we were sent out, uh, those of us who were sent out to plant Mavuno Church. Her name is Rose Moyo. Please put a, your hands together. Invite this fearless influencer. <laughs> 